I wanted people when they came to the exhibition to be able to travel through the essence of the book. The essence of the book is always bringing you back to home, which is Ghana. The book is all about two sisters who were half sisters. They were separated at birth. One sister ended up staying in Ghana and marrying a British man who came to colonize in Ghana. The other sister ended up being sold into slavery. It was really important for me to have the show be a great representation of the story. And so I wanted to have artists that were international artists from Africa. I wanted to have artists that were local artists as well as national artists. So we have national, international, and regional artists represented in the show. River Spirit is an accumulation of different fabrics that I've painted and, and embellished. I make a form out of what would be considered like paper mache and I cure the paper pulp for about two years. This happens to be a, a representation of the struggle of someone that is from the motherland, Africa. She lives off of the river. Her spirit comes from the river. She is the river spirit. Shepepe Maganto is a South African artist. He is a painter who does collage work with fabrics. I love his work because he's representing oftentimes women in his culture. He represents people that are socialites, like this particular one is actually someone who's a royal person in South African culture. And so he does work that is definitely inspired by what's happening in culture. Um, he has a piece over here called Family. This piece over here uh, that has the mask on that was created during the time of COVID. He wanted to show how family members were still able to be together and communicate even though, you know, they were having to be draped with these fabrics around their faces. When we think about home, typically we think about the curtains in our grandmother's living room, or we might think about the sofa print that was, you know, the floral print that was on the sofa, or we oftentimes think about quilts and our bedding, the things that kept us warm in, in, in the evening. The G's Bank Collective has a tremendous history. They started quilting during enslavement times, like around like the mid 1800s is when the G's Bank Collective started. They didn't call it that at the time, but that's when the ladies started quilting. And eventually their quilts became this international phenomenon. You can see Xi's pen quilts in the Smithsonian. They have been collected all over the world. I drove to Xi's Bend and met a woman by the name of Queenie Petway, who was a very, very famous quilter in Xi's Bend. And these quilts really symbolize what you can do with your hands and a little bit of something. Just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it turns into this. This is Tallulah Beulah, and Tallulah Beulah is like my version of what we call a scarecrow or a garden fairy that would be placed in the garden or what would be formally known as the plantation. These are mostly a collage of cuttings from art pieces that I have made over the years and designed for what I consider wearable art. The dream pot next to her is as a child, I had a neighbor that was down in Selma that used to tell us, just tear off a piece of cotton or tear off a piece of fabric. Think about your dream, drop it in the pot, honey. It'll come to you. So that is what that's from. So Chesley Antoinette, she did a collection called Tion, where she created sculptural pieces as well as photography. And what I 
absolutely love about these pieces is that it shows the depth, the richness, the variety that women can use. And so in Louisiana, there was the Tian Law and women, thats they had to wear a head covering over their head. It was law. Um, they couldn't leave the house without it. And so Chesley's work being uh, almost like a reinvention of what those ladies probably looked like, you know, a long time ago and the variety of things that they did and how creative they had to be to come up with all of these different styles that they had to wear, you know, as a way to oppress, but really it became an enhancement. It is such an honor to be showcasing artists who are local and national and international because it really re reflects the extent to which our community has an ability to invite artists and perspectives from all around the globe. Museums help shrink our worlds by introducing us to how large and vast the world is, but helping unify us around these common themes and these things we have in common. One of the things that connects us all as human beings is our use of fabric. And so I would love for people to just be able to come into this space and feel a connection to the human experience.